Hey, this is Brie Bagwell, and if you want to listen to this podcast early and ad-free, subscribe to my Patreon at www.patreon.com backslash Brie Bagwell. I wonder if we could like procure the footage from the pool because that was the best part. I just kept looking up at the camera and waving at no, it. No, there was, was not one. Ca- there was six cameras. Yeah, I was like, camera. so bah, many cameras. Huh, huh, huh. And then ever but for- we were all like, you're not forty yet. You're thirty six and a half. Okay, so you were the youngest in the pool. I was the second to youngest. Well, yeah, Paul's my age, right? Paul's forty one. Me too. Okay, yes. Yeah, so he and I are the same age. So you were the baby. Me and Paul were next. The rest of those suckers are damn near 50, if not already, you know? Hey, hey, everybody. This is Bree Bagwell, and this is my podcast, Only Vans, where I talk to my friends in my van. But it's from Trailer Park Boys Mm. and Mr. Leahy, and he said, we do a wraparound, and then he would do it like this. Oh, yeah. That's too much. A little sippy poo. So. One time I went this way, and Matt Hillier was a like, are wraparound. you a psycho? It's obviously this way because the natural flow of your arm. That's funny. I go this way. Okay, well, he's going to call you a psycho Watch. now. <gasps> Take that, Hillier. Take that, Hillier. We wrap around the same way. Me, right. and Co- me and Copat. Uh, and a rip, rip, rippity do. <laughs> Things are being here. I was so excited when... Oh, you said yes. Well, you texted me. I've been waiting. Like, you've only been doing this for so long. And I you're know. like, oh, yeah, when I'm in Fort Worth again, I'm like. We, no, we don't. We have never filmed on location. We've only filmed in New Braunfels. Yeah, so this so is great. I have all these people like Steve Helms is like, you don't like your best friend. It's like, well, no, we only film in New Braunfels. Right. So if you want to come down here. Sorry, bud. And now you got to leave. You got to leave your territory. Leave. He's not, he doesn't do that much. He doesn't venture. Much. Not for us. <laughs> He ventures to Mexico. Oh, yeah. But, like, not to yeah. New Braunfels. He rides his thumb all the way down there. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he? He, do- he sure does. Somebody's thumb. <laughs> <Good. laughs> it's not mine. I'm thumb. kind of excited not- about this and a little no, nervous. Can I do Can I do this now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, might. it's for me and um, Pumpkin. Mm-hmm. It says BMP for me and Paul. Well, you also, I love your Christmas cards. It's You're always on my refrigerator, so I Good. think about you. Every day. I really do, Good. though. I'm like, oh, and I, sometimes I'll talk to you. I'll be like, Courtney, I'm going to eat this cold pizza. Tell me no, and nice. then you never do. You're just like, eat that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Well, you might have to tell the story okay, first or no. Oh. Yeah, I know. This is a two-person job. This is. Uh, and it's probably ribbon that I recycled from. We're going to have to tell the story, yeah, but I think you should tell it. This might be messy. I'm nervous about it. Is it fine? I was going to... Ma- <laughs> How? It's going to be... Who has a knife? Oh, no, watch. I don't it's need a knife? It's just scotch tape. Oh, okay. Just, yeah. oh. I don't do the psycho tape. How did you have time to wrap a gift and you... I wrapped it right after... And you gardened this morning? Mailed it. I did lay sod. You laid sod this morning. I laid sod. I came home from my show last night because I knew I had to get the grass in the ground. It's going to get the couch so (gasps) much. It's my frog, (laughs) Ray. It's an inside joke, but I felt like. Well, um, I think. (laughs) I think you should tell everybody. No, you got to tell everybody. Tell the story? I have told a few people. we don't go into all the exquisite details of it. Or shall we? I think we should, because I keep having this anxiety, and tell me if I'm the only one, but I keep thinking we're going to wake up and it's going to be on TMZ. Oh, well, then let's just put it on there So I think if we proactively say what happened. So we, after a wonderful night, y'all had a night off, right? Your flight was canceled, so you just were like, let's just go out with a bang. We get an extra night in Key West, because you were supposed to be gone that night, I think. So you guys uh, went and... Day raged. Day raged. And it was great. And I went and I was doing the opposite of that. I went and did laundry at my friend's house for like four hours. Sat in the pool. Came back thinking, surely they're in bed. Because Heather said, it'll be an early night. No. It was not an early night. And I think you and Paul and I showed up around the same time. To that sandbar? To that sandbar next to our hotel. And when Max Stalling saw me and stood up, he... He almost fell backwards and I caught him and I thought, this is the night that I walked into. I have to join them. So I got a rum drink and got started and then Heather wanted to swim. I mean, so bad she wanted to She swim. was not going to let it go. She wasn't, she was not letting it go and she got butt hurt that I wouldn't take her to find the pool. I said, Heather, use your legs and your brain and walk around the back of that thing and go find the pool. 
you don't like me. And I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. I don't. Max, go take your wife and find the pool. So they found the pool and it's like we were Marco Poloing, not the app, but like Marco Polo to try to find the pool. And Kenny's like, it's by my room. Let's go. Kenny. That's. The, oh, yeah. He was. He was there. The, we met. The guy that drum he, <laughs> talked to you about. Oh, that's him. I love that guy. Yeah, He's awesome. OK, so we <laughs> we find the pool and it's locked. Is it not? It was so locked. It was so locked. And it was like a higher fence than I was comfortable with. It was with. quite high. And and I have quite short legs, you know. Well, Paul, being the jungle gym that he is, jungle rat, he decides, he looks at us throwing, reaching over and pulling chairs to try to make a makeshift step up and over and down on the other chair and over. And we look over and Paul's in the pool, like over getting by the pool. And we're like, how did you do that? And he's like, there's a trash can. I climbed over the trash can. And he was... Like, yeah. Oh, you're a genius. So we all get over there and then realize none of us have swimsuits at all. Paul was already naked, I think, by the time we got over My there. My favorite part was <laughs> Paul starts getting undressed and then he stops and realizes he didn't have underwear on, I think. Mm-hmm. And and he stopped and he goes, I don't I don't have underwear on. And we all just busted out laughing and he was like, eh, jumps in. He's in. He was naked and in the pool. In under 15 it seconds. I mean, it was really quick. We really had to coax you in. Yeah, yeah I was kind of... You and Heather were kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. But I also, it took us like 20 minutes to get over the fence. Like we, we did. We were really... We had a cheerlead, so like one, two down up, and then we got over. So then we got in, and then... And it was all uh, sorts of combinations of only one person was truly skinny dipping. <laughs> I was bottom you, half skinny dipping. You had your a pants weird off. combo because, you know, again, Captain No Underpants. And... um. <laughs> Jason was in his boxers. Max went and put his bathing suit on because he's Max and he's just classy like that. Right. So there's just a combination of all of us in the water laughing and passing around a bottle of random bourbon, I think. And yeah. uh, and then I married you and Paul. Right. Well, someone was like, why? Are, or I think it was Max. who was like, when are you guys going to get married? And why aren't you married? And or I something? said, I'm ordained. I can do it right now. <laughs> And Paul's like, let's do it. And then I went to go, the frog. The frog was on Jason's neck. It was a tiny frog. The tiny tree frog or water frog on Jason's neck. And Jason is terrified of bugs. And all I could think of is that's a cockroach. And if I say something, he's going to freak out and then run away and we'll never see him again. And, like he's going to have a heart attack down. and yeah. he, he and dies. Die. He yeah. perishes <laughs> in the pool. It would have been a nightmare. It would have been all over TMZ for sure. Um, and so I, I told Josh messenger and sweet Josh was like, oh, it's a frog. And you go, oh, and then you you put it on your hand and you go, whiskey, I miss you. <laughs> oh, I forgot I did that. So you started talking to the frog because you missed your dog. Yeah. And the frog never left your hand. And it so was... then it became the joke that if it crawled to your ring finger, the wedding would be legal. If it didn't, it w- so it didn't ever get on your ring finger. It didn't, because so, I thought it was, I know it was like on my on hand. It was for... and then the joke was that you... Um, killed the frog so that it wouldn't crawl. Well, cuz when I went to get out of the pool, you had you were help holding up the the towel for me and then I just got, you know, I get like awkward brief phase and I just got out of the pool really fast and I dropped the frog and I think I I crushed the frog. I don't think you crushed it at all. I think it swam and and was just so happy to have witnessed such a beautiful evening that we had and shared and it was we got out of the pool and the next day, I mean, I for me, I've been every time. You've been every time to yeah. mile zero. Yes. It was my favorite memory me too it was the best night and max said that too and that's saying a lot like, literally was... all of us and jason who <sighs> like i think he got kicked out of a bar on his birthday this year and <laughs> ended up in a titty bar with mike harmeyer and uh um gary braun and like he had the best birthday ever he, even that trumped that so that's kind of cool it was so it fun was very fun and i remember but it might was... be legal guys it might be legal um... and the sweetest thing is paul wanted it to be <laughs> yeah well because waiter but are we really married? I was like, you can't be. You're in Key West. You're really married. If you're naked, I think it negates it, but maybe not. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. But then the whenever the other couple that was there, when he was like, do you, Paul? And the guy said, you better say I do. She's going to kill you. I was like, Paul's the one that he, hey. Right. Why is it always like the, right. you know, the dude that doesn't want it or whatever. That's right. But that's not the deal. That's we, not the deal. It's, it's just not the deal. But we're just so... Um, in debt with us, ha- our house. And like, so it was like the perfect wedding because it was sure. affordable. It was very sweet. <laughs> it was dear very friends sweet. around. Yeah. You said you would only have done it different with a few more friends and your parents, my parents. Your family. Yeah. We might have to recreate it. We'll recreate Can it. Can you do that again? I would for like me? to have pants on this time. No, but... no, no. It was really great <laughs> without really the pants great. because we were all kind of like, do you think 
you can see anything under this water and we were all oh, i mean i i was convinced <laughs> I, I was so nervous and i kind of kept my hands down and i was like it's dark there's no lights on we're fine <laughs> and then i go i mean y'all can't see and paul looks down and he goes oh you can see i was like no man don't tell me that it's the worst it was, it was the but best. also the best it was I, so great it was a really magical night and then I remember like the people that I had never met were there and we were all giving toast to uh -huh. our wedding and he said it all started with hopping a pool fence and that yeah <laughs> so that could either be like the Doug Moreland statue that Ragweed you know always yes. had on stage with him or but I was thinking for your new house no it's got to go at our new house for sure when it so gets now done you have and... a frog that you didn't kill and look at it it's looking at you with loving eyes no. like yeah remember me Claire picked that one out it's so cute remember when it's, I picked I out it two that were kind of oh. creepier and she's like this is sweeter no this is yeah. great okay good. I love it I might I'm gonna take it everywhere Paul's gonna love it so much <laughs> um I I selfishly want to know all about your new record but you don't have to tell me what you don't want to tell yeah, me but so how did it go it's been really good so the sec this is the second record I did at the finishing school here in Austin um with Gordy and Trevor and I let Trevor produce this one and Gordy co-produced it but he really let Trevor kind of take you know the lead and he did a great job and for those that don't know Trevor Nealon is the um, keys player for Band of Heathens and he's just like this musical mad scientist you know and he knows that Carol King's Tapestry album is like on my Mount Rushmore of albums and he really helped me find it in a way that it still sounds like me but it it sounds also very like 70s soul slash singer songwriter -y. There's like Bonnie Raitt vibes. There's Little Feet vibes. There's all of it. I love it so much. I'm so excited. When yeah. does it? Ha or I just so they're waiting to get it done. Finish. First. Uh, Trevor has a couple of songs to play keys on, and then Gordy's got to sing harmony on a couple of songs, and then it's ready to be mixed. So wow. I don't have a date. I'm not. It's like the first time that I don't like already know when it should be released and start planning that because that gives me so much anxiety. I just don't want to live like that anymore, and I don't. I, I know you're never going to make the money you spent back on it anyway. So why not just put it out how you want and don't stress about it. So that's what I'm doing for the first time ever. I love that. Zero stress. I did that with my last one, but then somehow I still ended up with like a deadline. Like it was like, well, yeah, I know you have to have I, one, but, yeah. but it, it was the best way to do it because it is so, and then the cover art and then the things, and right. then you have, then the, your transmission goes out and you can't afford to print the vinyls or whatever. Ugh. Like it's just, oh my gosh, putting out a record is so much harder than I think people realize so that hard. it is. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of work. And how many songs? It's 10. Dang. We, last time we did, we tracked like, I think last time we did 12 songs and then we only, because of the length of vinyl, can only get 10 on there yeah. and so then I had these two like singles so I was hoping I had 14 I wanted to do I was like if we just crank them out but um Trevor was a little more thorough and really I mean it was the right call and so we only got 10 done but they're great that is very so very exciting. exciting um David Jimenez played uh guitar he's an Austin baddie mm -hmm. and uh Nick J on bass and Richie came in, you know, he's, he's the former Richard Millsap is a former drummer for the heathens, but he's been with Fogarty for a couple of years now. So oh he my flew gosh. in from LA to play on it, which I didn't know that made me really happy. He wanted to do it. So it was really a special, special week. And, um, yeah, Kelly came in and sang some harmonies and, uh, I even sang harmonies on a couple, which is weird. Well, as I you don't should like that. I love it. No, I yes. I like singing harmony. Like, it's my favorite thing in the whole world. If you said, Courtney, will you go on the road and be my harmony singer? I would do it tomorrow. If I knew that I could make the same amount of money that I'm making. Yeah, no. I can't. Can. It pays $4 and a free frog kisses and chihuahua oh, kisses and that's kisses. it. So, this last weekend, uh, I had the honor of attending the Jewel Charity Ball in Fort Worth with Rodney and Brittany Parker. And I got to get dressed up and feel so mm. pretty. And we sat, we were, our table was at the back of the room and Diana Ross was the entertainment, but they had a house band called Q the band Q like the letter. I, I closed my, I heard Celine Dion and I turned around and this gorgeous blonde woman was singing Who is in the morning. Sounded exactly like her. Unbelievable. Whitney Houston, exactly uh. like her. Um, I have nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And then, yeah. yeah, and then she looked at me and she saw me vibing and she like went like this and I was like, she knew. Yeah. I was like, I want to be up there so bad. 
that's my dream job to just be in a cover band and make probably more money than I make doing this and slaving over my own emotions, you know, to make things. Uh, and just I have a sing. cover band. Do you know that about me? No. Yeah, I have a super secret cover band that's not so secret, and I have uh, backup singers. But what's happening? Wait, I know. How do I not know this? Because I try to. I well, I think. Do you play like weddings and stuff? N- no, we like do like cruise? corporate stuff on. I know. So next time you can absolutely come do it. It's well, it's it's Brie back on the Rocky Mountain Bandits, but um, it's all '90s country. But we are not like the cover band that you can um request songs from yeah, like you we have set list. we have these sure. and this is all we do and that it's been so really cool. fun and i think like you touched on it and it's exactly how i feel there's no ticket sales there's right. no pressure yeah. there's no whether people like your song or not it's just going and singing live band karaoke great and we only do music. it like four times a year it's great so i'll let you know next time because it's so it's super fun it's yeah. usually like on a tuesday i love it the last one was uh, we played Kendra Scott's birthday party with my 90s band. Wait. And, and then she hired us back. The jeweler? Yeah. And then she hired us back to play another Kendra Scott Junk Gypsy event. Um, Wait, this is awesome. It's really fun. Our first one, Kyle's at the first one, it was a little, it was a little shaky. But we're getting better. You know, it's 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 a lot of work. Like those and things is it are still your band? Or a totally still different? Still my band. Okay. But I add... I add either singers or sure. a fiddle player or something. Right. Anyway, I don't know how we got off that. But I, I do think it's important because it's Are you emotional. Cool the frog? No, I'm still... glad. Okay. It. It's okay. Oh, whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> I miss her so much. I know. Paul says I see like a raccoon running across the road and I'm like, oh, whiskey. Yeah. I miss her so much when I don't have it. Yeah, the frog was, it took the cake though. That was pretty yeah. great because I would never look at a frog and think about my cat or anything. You know? I just, I love talking to you about, sorry to me to cut off your cat stuff. I love, no, I love that you love cats. <laughs> You can create a cat lady. Nobody likes know. cats but me, so it's okay. I like them. I love dogs, but I, I can't. I don't uh, have a fence, and I don't have a doggy door, and I don't have children that will stop by and take care of them. I mean, I shouldn't put that on my kids, so... Peyton's good to scoop the litter box when I'm out of town, because now I have a college kid that's a roommate. That's yeah. insane. I love that. Hey, this is Brie Bagwell, and if you want to sponsor this amazing podcast, all you have to do is email onlyvanspodcast at gmail.com. Are you ready to take your merchandise to the next level? Well, just ask me who I use, and that is CH Lone Star Promo. They specialize in screen printing and direct-to-garment, embroidery, laser engraving, anything promo-related, they can do it. Step up your merch game now with CH Lone Star Promo and tell them Brie and Whiskey sent you. But wait, you're not allergic to cats? Are you? Oh, I'm so allergic. I feel like allergic. everybody on the planet that says they don't like cats says they're allergic to cats, no, but you really are. I'm definitely allergic. So you- Deathly? Not no. That but was you'll, dramatic. You'll get hives <laughs> and your throat will close no, up and itch. No, that was, I was being dramatic. Your like I want to scratch out my eyeballs mm-hmm. and I can't stop sneezing. That's true. And that's like Rachel was talking about that too. But I like cats. Rachel I had cats growing up. in my house and she didn't die, so that's good. Okay. She may have died and not told me because she's sweet. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I think she died. No, I'm just kidding. She's <laughs> she's totally fine. I'm but ask her. I know, she's, she's here. here. So she's, she didn't die. Die. Of but, course, she's gonna be here because right. you're here and I'm here. That makes me really happy when I called Juliana and she answered and said, "I'm in the van." I was like, "Ah!" Yeah. So it's I brought them night. in the Sprinter van. I, so I have good. to drive anyway, and I can't, you know, do this podcast drunk. I tried it once, I think, and it didn't go well. So who was the guest for that? <sighs> I'm gonna go do find you remember? that one. Or did you have to redo it? <laughs> Who was it? Kyle, when I did Kyle. I had had a rough weekend and I just, we were in my backyard in the RV because we do in the RV now. So I was just like, I'm going to have a few. And then I talked too much, but I already talked too much. So multiply it's, but I'm so glad we should do at least once a month. You should come be my co-host. I think you would be the perfect podcast. The heck out of this thing. Yeah. Co-host. But I do want to sit in the van at some point. So yeah. Yeah. Today we're doing Saxon pub because we love them and they gave us their green room. And then we're doing this show together. Um, Courtney and I wrote one song together and it was the first day that we met. Also, it slaps and you still like you took it to number one and people still every time I play a show, they ask for it, which I think Me is too. a huge compliment. We still play it. We have, we never took it out so of our why set. why did we write a number one and then never write it again together? We, we have to. Because we like to talk. We need to like get it. We need to get it and together. And we also like to work. It's yeah. really the true story is that we live far away and we both really work a lot. I hard. say that a lot about like friends and geography because it's right. like, you know, you kind of 
become really close friends with who you can see in 15 sure. minutes or whatever, because I, I would be in real trouble if me and you lived close or like me and Heather or yeah. whatever. Oh, it, I know. it would be really, really hard. Cause I wish we lived closer just for the vent, the vent sessions of being a female artist. It's we should make a little Marco Polo thread for us. Cause okay. I have a group of girls that were fans that became my friends and now they're like my besties. And we talk every day almost all day long, just in little short bursts, but through Marco Polo. So we're seeing each other's faces. Yeah. How's your day? How's your son feeling? Lauren, what are you doing with work? Brooklyn, where are you traveling? Like we just check in on each other and I've never had a group of friends where I just go, I'm completely myself. I'm so relaxed. And like Lauren, so she's our little Yoda. She's just so calm and Zen. And she said, she read something where somebody said, if you're having a hard time and you say, do you need eight minutes? Like I'll give you eight minutes of time to just, like fall apart or whatever you need. And then like, it says that a person, if they get eight minutes of time where somebody's focused on them and letting them like have it, that it fixes them feeling sad. So now if any of us are having a bad day, one of us will go, do you need eight minutes? And everybody's like, no, I think I'm okay. Yeah. But that's such a cool I need thing eight minutes to know. today. I need eight minutes I'm time. like, what time's the show? Do yeah, I need I'll, eight minutes I'll after this? Minutes. We're getting eight Thanks. minutes. Thanks. I know. Yeah. We're getting like yeah. 18 minutes, 28 minutes. Oh, well, goodness. I know it flies by when you're having so much fun, but it, it's, it's so true and it's uh, good girlfriends. Like I feel like the older you get, the smaller your Absolutely. circle mm -hmm. gets. And now every time I see you at Steamboat or it's like, Jamie, it's like we all have the same exact problems. Yeah. And you have a really small outlet for who can un understand it. But then all my girlfriends understand it. They're not musicians. Like right. they are there for me. So it's just finding your tribe and they don't necessarily have to be Absolutely. in the music I agree. industry. But they love music, which helps. Because yeah, my they girls have to are love like music. super music fans. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I know. It's great. But I do. I love our little group thread. And I don't always communicate in it because most of the time I'm at sound check or I'm busy or they're doing something or I'm, you know, whatever. But it is nice having Sunny and Brennan and Kayla and Aaron yes. and Jamie and Heather. Like we have a fun little thread of. Um, what is it called now? Cockery? Ladies Lounge. <laughs> okay. Oh, we had Cockery and Ladies Lounge. I don't know why. It, like, I think yeah. there's two threads that got. It's the same people in both threads. Yeah. Cockery. I yeah. don't know. You're Sunny, right. Sunny Sunny named changed it. it. Uh -huh. But it is, it, it's a, a safe outlet. But there was, I wanted to tell you, there was this TikTok that somebody sent me. Oh, my tour manager sent me the other day. And it was this girl and she's talking about um, the ladies that have um, paved the way for Texas music. And it was really cool because it was like you, me, Jamie, you know, Pauline, Charlotte. But it was, and cry. she's like, oh, I know. And she was like, she looked like a college girl. She was young, but... I didn't know if it made me feel old or accomplished or all the things really, right. but it was, it was, I mean, I remember meeting you at Steamboat 10 years ago. I mean, we've really been doing it and figuring it mm -hmm. out for this long. And that's like really saying something. You've been for, doing it longer than me though. I didn't have the guts to quit my day job until I turned 30. That was smart. You probably built up some sort of retirement that I have not uh, built. I definitely <laughs> did not do that. I, and I waited until I was a single mom and my dad's like, you know, I'm your biggest fan, but is this the right time to quit? Like, you have a paycheck coming in every Friday and now you're going to throw that away and you have two kids. And I was like, dad, when else am I going to do it? It's now or never. And now it's been 12 years. And I'm like right. the, the year that I surpassed what I made at my day job, I was like the most, you know, you could have, yeah. you couldn't have said anything to me. I was just on top of the world. I thought I just did that with my voice and my words and my guitar. What a cool, I mean, as hard as it is and as hard as those days are memories like we made in Key West moments on stage where you just go this is my job mm -hmm. they make up for all the nights that i cry myself to sleep and i want to quit and go back to college and get my master's and like yeah i, I want to quit so much i know i have <laughs> I been quit so much that's but, so interesting because that that was me this morning i was like you know what i think that's it like there are some days where you are and it's Absolutely. not and it's not like rare it's kind of a lot it's, it's a kind lot, of and it's not dramatic me. either it's just genuinely like you step back and go do i want to deal with the heartache of this anymore mm -hmm. but then you have those little nuggets that i mean it's just like a relationship right like it would be so easy to walk away when things are bad and you feel like things are bad but there are really great moments that just make you go no, this is why we do this, right. you know? And so. I think that's why it's so hard because it is the highest highs. Like sure. we played in Arizona this weekend and it was like beautiful weather, great crowds, great shows. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Monday hits and I got a couple bombs dropped today. And right. so I think it's just coming down off of the, 
way up here. Oh, gosh. So it, it's like you're not coming off the weekend like, eh, mm-hmm. that was an okay weekend. You're like, I just got to jam with Reckless Kelly till four in the morning right. or whatever. The it's prom- got to be a crash, right? Like the dope is it dopamine or serotonin or what, whatever it is. Estrogen? Like, no, yeah, that's not right. There's probably not true. <laughs> testosterone. I might be lacking your something. Testosterone dumps. <laughs> your BDE. Dick energy, you know. Oh, great. Yeah. I, I think I, I've I, been rocking that today. I've been feeling no, it. No, I can tell. It to me. It's just making your, me feel like. Your hair and the gold oh, really? and your and the earrings. You are, I teased it in the bathroom. Okay. I, yeah. You're doing a BDEing up in I here. am. I said spring was showing off its nature dick and I was just <laughs> following suit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> how, are you, how are you going to not follow? I'm Nature did. <laughs> we should I'm have like our... That. That's great. our next hit. That's our next song. It yeah. goes from Cheat on Me to yeah. that. My mom Cheat is like, oh dick, no. So here we are. Sorry, mom. Sorry, mom. It's fine. I She's... had to say that last night. I said something about a reach around. Uh, we did the wraparound. We uh. did the wraparound at the show last night. I had to teach J.D. Graham. He's wonderful if you don't know him. My goodness, what a story. So he was our guest last night at our show. I taught him the wraparound, which he sober. But I was like, take your water, wrap it around, you know. And then I said, not a reach around, guys, because they laughed when I said wrap around. Yeah. Go, it's not a reach around. I said, that's after the show. And my dad's like, oh, oh God, Courtney. You know? Hear him up, dad. Sorry. My mom goes, what about your mom? Yeah. I was like, you too, mom. Sorry. Sorry, mom and dad. Yeah. I know. They I feel like. They me too long. They I... understand. My mom's getting, I mean, she, they've gotten over the years a little numbed to Finger it. skin, yeah. Or just, I think society in general has kind of loosened up yeah. a little bit, right? Don't mm-hmm. you think? But I'm, I still say sorry, mom, but she, she loves me regardless. Yeah, um, mine too. She, except if I got married and she wasn't there, that might be the well, one thing not, that like, sorry, mom. Really, yeah. <laughs> they didn't sign the paper. We didn't have papers. So that's what keep, that's really the only thing keeping it from being legal and binding is I told Paul, I said, just text me in the morning if you want me to print that print that up. It's after midnight. It's still the same day. We could just sign it. Oh, well, we should just recreate it. I we'll think. recreate it. It would be a really funny video. God, it would, I it wonder would. if we could like secure the footage from the pool because that was the best part. I just kept looking up at the camera and waving at no, it. No, there was, was not one. Ca- there was six cameras. Yeah, I was like, camera. uh, so uh, many cameras. Uh, 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 and then every, but for, we were all like, you're not 40 yet. You're 36 and a half. OK, so you were the youngest in the pool. I was the second to youngest. Well, yeah, Paul's my age, right? Paul's 41. Me too. Okay. Yes. So he and I are the same age. So you were the baby. Me and Paul were next. The rest of those suckers are damn near 50, if not already, you know? And uh, I just, that was what made me laugh more than anything is we were giggling like we were college kids breaking into a pool and we're middle-aged people. Yeah. Half naked, in our underwear or no underwear. Or nothing. Or nothing. (laughs) It was the best. I know. And I think that, you know what, if it gets out and, and that's what we're known for, that was, what are they going to be mad? We were, <laughs> you, you can't be mad at Max Stalling skinny dipping and crossing a fence. Like Max Stalling gets us out of everything. Yeah, Don't you does. think like he's just like, by, the, he's just so, he's the most, he's our gentle giant. He wouldn't is. you say? Yeah. Like not to even bring his height into it. He's just so smooth and like gentle and kind and he's he and heather are genuinely the nicest people in our scene the greatest i've never heard them say anything bad about anyone they're just kind and supportive and legitimately this is that sweet like as sweet as they seem they're sweeter guys it's so gross yeah it's so gross because me and Courtney are like kind of sweet but like kind of jerks we're, sweet, but we're just kind of we're just kind of brats a yeah, little well, bit but like a dis- but we try we're trying actively to be we're trying so hard. <laughs> Jamie and Jason had a bit on the road this summer, and she said, they said, that's growth. Like, gross with a lisp, but also growth. Also you know, gross. so it was kind of a joke. So, like, that's growth. Okay, I love that. Yeah. I love that. We'll you, steal that from them. I feel like you deal with things, too, where, like, people kind of, like, loop you in with Jason, and people loop me in with Paul. And, like, every night people are like, is Brie coming? And Paul's like, she has her own career also was she getting paid to be here that's what we like the booking agent we finally just say they can't look at it as they were trying to get a package deal i'm sure you went through that too like well if we can get brie and paul for the same price as we would have just gotten brie no right you can get jason for this price and then you can double that and get me right because that's what i make on a night off if i'm getting hired I don't need him to make that money. Right. Yes, it's going to be a great show if you hire us both, but you have to hire both of us. Yeah, that's such a strange thing because it's like, oh, no, you should want to be with your man mm-hmm. on your day off. It's like, no, I want to pay my bills yeah. is what I want to do. I'd like to take a nap. Right. Or I'd that. Like to, you know, cook dinner and sleep in my own bed and not have to deal with this. <laughs> right. And sometimes when I go see Paul, he does this little mariachi moment in the middle of the show and it is comical. Every time he does it, someone comes up and 
starts talking to me and I never get to watch it. And um, so whenever I go, I would like to just go watch the Wilder sure. Blue as a band and I don't get to really enjoy it most hey, of the how time. How was the Opry though? No, I cried the whole I time. Bet. And I mean, obviously full, full transparency, because this is something that I feel like I could talk to you about. But I, I told him I was like, I'm like 99 percent elated, super happy for you. And then one percent jealous yeah, of that, I, or whatever. I was, but I, I would I would say maybe not jealous, but hopeful that you could also. Be yeah, right, right. Like, right. I'm like, so how do we I get more do that. girls being invited? Because it seems like our guys are being invited. But can we get more girls being invited to play the Opry stage? Because we work just as hard. And we've been doing it just as long. Yeah, we've been doing it a long time, me and you. So it, then you can come sing harmonies with me at the opera. And likewise, like I. Oh no, I, I. You should try being like a campfire mediocre harmony singer like me. It takes a lot of pressure. You're a off. great harmony singer. You Thanks. always say that, and it angers me because you're fantastic. Thanks, that's very nice. But, Thank you. Um, I, I just yes, I understand that, and I don't know about you, but I didn't like. I got. I had the honor of being asked to sing with Jason, and I was so proud. And I just stared at him like I know how much this means to him. And he stood in the circle and he's like, do you want to? And I go, no. This is your circle moment. I want to step in the circle when it's my turn, mm -hmm. if I get that chance. And if I don't, I don't. But it felt sacrilegious to be like, dip yeah. a, to even dip a toe close. Like, I didn't even get close to it. I was like, I'm going to stay on this side of the stage. This is you. Yep. Like, respectfully, this was all. It was so cool. It was such a great it was such a great moment. Who was back? Who played the night that they played, like, backstage? Um... Corb Lund was there, oh, who fun. I just like. Isn't he so fun? He's the most fun. Like we only see each other in passing at Seamo oh, and stuff. And 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 he's like, we should get some beer later. Yeah. That was the worst Canadian it accent. Was really good. And we're always like <laughs> threatening to drink or hang out, and we never get to. Oh, but he's so the most. He's the most fun. He's so fun. He was there. Sierra uh, Farrell was there. She was amazing. She was so good. And then um, John Anderson. No, not John Anderson. Uh, who's the one that's always there? John Conley. John Conley was not okay. there. And Jeannie Seeley was not there. Crystal Gale was there. And I was like... She's still beautiful. She's have still long hair. gorgeous. And um, I'm in a fight with Steve Helms right now because... And you're probably going to punch me in the face. I did not know that she was Loretta Lynn's sister. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How did I not know that? I don't know. <laughs> That's they Steve don't look alike to me. But once you know... Once you see it, you see it. But Crystal Gale was younger. Or it's, to me, seemingly a lot younger than mm. Loretta. Loretta had more of a rough around the edges and crystal gale was just like this goddess you know yeah. i just remember that long hair like my mom had that record and i was like how how is it so healthy looking yeah i can't even keep this length hair I without know. having to curl it to hide the dead ends you know it, i use a wet brush and it looks like i've just been like somebody's taken like scissors and just chopped my hair it just breaks off i'll do it in paul's truck and he's like really I really in here it's i don't know. know isn't it it looked really good, but Dang. someone came in and was like, hey, there's this lady out there, her hair's to the floor. And I'm like, yeah, that's Crystal Gale. Like, how do you not know yeah, like she's known who that for person it, is? Yeah, it was very funny. Um, but everyone was very nice. The, the hospitality was amazing. Good. It was good. good. So, um, but you got to go. The show starts in like 10 minutes. Oh, but, well, I guess um, we have to work. We have to work, kind of, but we should definitely like make a pact to write another song. There's also song. so many things we didn't even talk about. I know. About. Do you want to talk? Here, get them out we real fast. We have to do a part two, I think. Yeah, we'll do a part two. What's another question you have to ask me? Hard-hitting um, stuff. Oh, gosh. Do you remember the first thing you ever said to me? No, it wasn't the first I'm terrified. thing. terrified. Was it at the camp? Isn't that the first time we truly bonded, though? Because we had never really gotten to hang out, and I was so happy. Yeah. Was it gross? No, it was I'm hilarious. Gross. You were like... I have to hold on. Let me let me whisper in your ear. <laughs> yeah, don't say it on the open mic. <laughs> That's funny. And I was like, who is this person? And then um yeah. Turns it was out amazing. I have no filter ever. <laughs> and I was like, is that Courtney Patton? And it was you're like, I wanna talk to you, but and then you said that. Isn't that hilarious? Wow. And that I, is really brazen. And I, I guess I just felt that safe around you. I loved it. I was like, we're going to be friends. <laughs> we are. <laughs> I do wish I saw you more. And now we're, I want to make a pact to do that. We should We should, We should. should try harder for sure because we, we are in this thing together yeah. and it's a... Uh, it's a this is my year. Of... I promised I promised my friends and myself, this is my year of me and my friendships and like pouring my love into that. And I, I called Mike Carmeyer on the way down here and, I, and he goes, are you good? And I was like, yes. I thought about you. Your song came on. I wanted to check on you and just call you and say hi. And I said, this is my goal this year. I always say it this year. I'm going to do it. And I love it, it. I'm a better, happier person. It's going to make me cry. No. <laughs> Friendships are so important, especially in this job. And 
I'm just a better person when I spend time with y'all. So, oh, well, yeah. we love you. You are, you are the best hang. What did I text you the other day? Who, who was it that said it? Courtney is the ultimate. Oh shoot. Zane Williams. I texted you. Zane said, yeah. And I, I was like, I know Which she. Is funny because she's I don't, the ultimate hang. I always feel like I overwhelm him with me. <laughs> no, you are you're you're brilliantly talented, but you are also like a stand up comedian and an amazing talent. So you're you all wrapped have up Crystal in one. On your podcast. Oh yeah. Okay. She's been in retirement for a couple of years, but I think she's ready to come back out. Really? Yeah. Tina Wilkins hates Crystal. Uh oh. No, she doesn't. She doesn't hate her. Nobody. She just thinks it ran its course. I mean, she's just, I think Crystal repulsed her. I think it scared her how good I was. <laughs> no, you are a magician. Like, whenever that first happened, I was like, this, uh, well, first of all, I couldn't do that podcast because I would be <laughs> laughing the whole entire time. But it was, that was the most fun. And you, you're, you are an actor. Like, you should be an actress for I sure. I wanted to be. Stoney told me. He, <laughs> He hey God. The pandemic, he goes, my God, he started quoting Crystal. And he's like, am I right? And he goes, my God, you're just this gorgeous woman. And he goes, and then you're that. <laughs> I know. It's the best. And it made me laugh really hard. It got us all through COVID, <laughs> as did Sequester Songwriters, which was so much work for you. I can't even imagine you guys doing that. Because just for our us to sing a song every week was right. like a ton of work. Mm -hmm. So like to learn the songs and put it all together. How did you, did you just drink through it or what? There was a lot of that. It was just so fun. <laughs> I mean, it was so fulfilling to, again, friendships, like getting to see y'all every week and like be together, even though it was this weird time of separation for all of us, we got to see each other every week. It felt like, it felt like the world wasn't over because we had each other and it was just a really beautiful moment. And it was doing good things for people that needed it, you know, like, We've paid medical bills and paid for gallbladders to come out and two cars that were totaled and they didn't have insurance because we're musicians and like we didn't do that. We just sang songs with our friends, but people were so generous and tipping. We're like, we can't splitting that up 30 ways would be silly. Why can't we take this and just put it in a savings account and like make a nonprofit and help people? And so to me, that's the thing to be most proud of is that we, by just having fun with our friends made something really beautiful in a really shitty time in life. You and know? it was so fun. And yeah. it was like it pushed our boundaries. Yeah. And it's good. Yes. And people, I don't know about you. Do they talk about it? Like everywhere we go, somebody brings it up. Hey, thank y'all so much for that. I was like, it's been four years and you're still saying thank you. Or where they'll come to shells and they'll or wear the hat, hat because they yeah. know that it's, it's you know, us. it's, mm -hmm. it's a way of saying like, Hey, I'm your I'm person. Your club. Yeah. It's, so it's the best. I love you so much. I love you. You're Thank doing you great things. We got to have a part two and a three and a four and 45. Okay. I'm and then I'm going to kiss this frog. Okay. No, I can kiss him because then I already have Paul. I already kissed a bunch of frogs <laughs> in my life. Courtney's been there. She's she's <laughs> loved me through it. Do you want to kiss this <laughs> no, frog? I'm good. Okay, okay. <laughs> what if all that ends?